right here. And uh, just to be clear, neither, neither of these teams are in particularly brilliant places at the moment. Old are currently 1-1, one one. Ivy currently 1-1. One one. Ivy do have that big win over Nygma. Both teams lost to x Aspir as well. So a win here would really, really help both of their standings and keep their dreams of getting top two alive here in Division 2. So let's see what they can pull out the bag. Both teams relatively posturing out the river. We rarely see the big five-man wrap around to, to take the fight for the bounty. Normally, the teams are kind of like poking, hoping to fish out that one person, but already starting with the D-Ward. Good that stuff from Jam, but... Probably a dead Pugna. The disruption's going to buy him a little yes. bit of time, but death shall come to the little green dude. They try and leave the kill for Thompson, but realize that they're probably just going to have to give it over to no one. And uh, Rogers is going to even man him a little dip as well. Yes, yeah, so what happened was JM was like Roger Pog Chen. No one then tipped Chen because he's like, yo, yeah, you're Chen. And of course, Roger returning the favor. So that was the law behind the tip game. Thank you. Always on hand to deliver those. Of course. Hmm. So a little bit of lane swap arenas. Roger's going to be laning with the Medusa. And then the kit track is going to be the body uh, for the Cuddle. I was a little bit concerned because... Chen Kotal in the same same lane, it feels <laughs> yeah. like you're sacrificing the lane where you hope for a couple CS and whatnot. So I don't mind the change up. We'll see how much Roger and uh, no one can do in the top lane now. Yeah, it's uh, seems like a tricky Magnus lane. I'll be honest, but maybe I'm wrong. I feel like you just get snaked to death up here. Uh, Magnus can always be so annoying, and he's just going to get a Vanguard and survive anyway, isn't he? What a guy. Meanwhile, we have this Void Spirit and uh, Storm Spirit matchup in the middle lane, and like most of the Spirit matchups, pretty even. They'll just trade around with each other. Go spell for spell. It's uh, not likely to be one big advantage the other way, but I mean, I was saying that Moonlight has got a good start. I mean, Thompson hopefully can get both of these range creeps under tower, which will even things out a bit, but. Yeah, very good start for Moonlight, actually. So he's going to take the early advantage here. And meanwhile, down at bottom. A lot of trading coming out. That is what Pugna does so damn well. He just chases you down, lays down these Nether Blasts. Too quick to really get into attacking range for Kitrak as well. So Kitrak, he's, he's going to be a bit of a lemon in this bottom lane, as uh, unfortunately, Spirit Breaker usually is. Laning phase, not his strong point. But after that point, he he, he just kind of goes apeshit and, and just runs around the map doing what he wants. <laughs> yeah, perfect depiction of it. And no one... Already getting hit by his own illusions at the two minute mark is able to just disengage from top. Yeah, I think. Don't forget that this is uh, Topson's first game on Voice Break competitively since all the changes, him inventing the build practically throughout the pro scene. Zero. Dead. Yeah. Good old Roger back at it again with the Chen plays. I mean, he just brought one creep into the lane and got a kill, but still. Gotcha. Um, pog, pog, pog. So sick. Why? Love why are you gotcha? That's just, something I'm not aware of. That's just his nickname. You're back oh, in it? the days. When he does something oh, well, he's, he's got you. Same way Topson is. It's... He has a lot of names, but uh, no one is going to get brought down. The disruption into Skewer. Really showing that you have to watch your step in this top lane. You get too close to that tower and, uh, well, there is nothing you can do about that. Absolutely nothing. Keeping the pool camp alive it often means that your crew waves in a in a good spot. So yeah, I be doing a good good job here. But again, all eyes on on Topson for me in this game. You're gonna put him on his void spirit, and then you have Moonlight on his specialty storm spirit that all these teams respect. So both mid laners are on ugly their best heroes of the patch right now. And then once again, mix it. Oh, nearly tries to go for a skewer top. This top lane, anytime no one steps up, it's instantly into an imprison, and then it's going for the, the shockwave into Skewer. It is a very scary combo. Copying my points, shake my head. I know, I'm just, just, just reiterating. Because it's high. Because no one listens it to again. it when I say it. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Disgusting. It's just nice to say it Hamless. twice, because it happened twice. Imagine <laughs> if you said the same thing like, every time it happened. Happened and just use shield. Happened and just use shield. I mean, if you, if you listen to my first few days of casting back in like 2013 or wherever it was, there's probably something like that. <laughs> uh, 
I do remember one specific I clip am... where there was like a death prophet and I was talking about what each of the ghosts were doing pretty much, being like, oh, the ghosts, they're going down, uh, now they're going across, uh, now they're going back down oh, again. Oh, God. <laughs> no. It's tough, tough times. And... Yeah. But now you've learned the spell names, you know, a big point. Yeah, it's all that's good. it. Now I can say Kid Track charges in on the bottom lane. Oh, great, a bash coming out straight away. See, all the cast, they just say bash there, and that's the difference. Look at you. Yeah, that is yeah. it. <laughs> Truly impeccable. But no, I think Ataka, he's really not showing his uh, the abandoned strength right now because, of course, the laning matchup is so difficult. And I, I think this hurts the hero a lot. Like, you don't have an inbuilt farming mechanism. The build often is phase boots, wand branches into Bassy, and then you go straight for the Radiance. And if you don't get two or three kills in laning phase, of course, that's like what, 800 gold. Your Radiance is an extra two, three minutes delayed. It, it can it can really hurt the hero. So I'm intrigued to see if this Coddle pick was just to say, yo, you, you're not going to be able to do anything to us. Your hero is just going to be AFK farming for even longer than you expected. Yeah, it was very safe indeed. And well, there's a bit of a congregation in the middle lane as uh, it didn't actually refill bottles, just TPing in. And I'm, I'm not too sure. Ruse actually is going to run to Roger. I mean, yeah, sure, you disrupt the hero, but I mean, he's still got those creepies just whacking away at him. One of which is the Harpy and one of which is the Ghost. I mean, they're very, very scary. Blue line under tower. Sick. Hit tracks. What was that? Uh, questionable. Roger does run down Rue, though, and gets himself a nice little solo kill on that Chen. But. Yeah, Kitrak coming in under the tower there, not quite connecting with that gank. Dude, Roger absolutely outplayed the hell out of Rue. Not only did he just have the uh, chain lightning spam from the Harpy Stormcrafter, he body blocked him whilst the ghost was applying the frost attack slow to then just, oh, it was just a beautiful solo kill. Like, yeah, this is why Roger Chen is one of the more infamous Chens in the world. Absolutely. Well, another running up in the top lane here, but he's going to get skewered away from his friends, and I'm not sure Kitrak can do this all by himself, especially with that Vanguard up on Mixer. So, no chance of a kill there. Just a little bit more scuffling under the tower. But OG definitely showing a lot more life in this game. I and mean, they're, they're already matching their kills. They're beating their they kills from last game. They have more kills than the previous yeah. game, yeah. Oh, no one. He's in trouble again. He's already been tipped. In fact, the preemptive tip, and that's because nothing's going to save him at this point. He's going to get run down once again. So hard for him to get away if he gets too far forward. Meanwhile, though, Jim Vincenzo will get killed off at mid. Kit Track and Thompson teaming up and getting it done. Yeah, well, I think there's a couple too many deaths on this Medusa already. And I think it, maybe it's a trade off because of the Chen. Chen's playing a very uh, wider map style of play. He's ganking mid. He was jungling for a little bit, trying to find that optimal creep. And in doing so, no one's been left by himself, pretty much, against an SD and a Medusa, uh, and a Magnus, sorry. If the Spirit Breaker was in the lane, then Spirit Breaker would be the one soaking up these disruptions, just being in the face. But maybe the lane swaps are hurting no one a little bit. Of course, the bounce back down the line, his net worth, he's still top net worth. He's still going to be miles ahead of Sabaddon for the foreseeable future, just because of how Abaddon is as a hero. Not the worst trade-offs, but just... Something to keep in mind of because of the the, ma the matchups. And as you see, OG are starting to take the lead, and when it comes to net worth, all three calls above their counterparts here so far. Narrowly, to be fair, it's 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 not a wipe, but it's looking pretty good when it comes to starting things off. The set one for the Trank's drum build, so most likely going to go for boots of bearing on this keeper light at some point. Often offlaners would be dicing between boots of travel, vessel, kind of playing a pseudo mid lane style of Kotal, but into the Abaddon, doesn't respect the vessel as much, and Roger finally might be going down. Yeah, he gets on top of Roger, Roger's gonna fall, but Moonlight's pretty low, and actually Kitrak connects with him there, doesn't break the charge with those zips, so that's gonna be a kill going their way. Thompson though, also in trouble, RP catches him out nicely. That should finish the job, certainly will. So both mid laners to fall, and that is gonna be the trade along with Roger. He had one second on his wand as well on the voice, Brit. A 13 charge wand could have maybe been able to turn it around. Still high beam. They, they need oh. to continue pushing Moonlight into these engagements. He needs to find some picks. Chen. Uh, actually, you know what? It's really hard to kill heroes. I was going to maybe list a couple heroes that Storm could reliably kill, but jumping a Void Spirit isn't reliable. Chen feels good, but then it's a Chen. Yeah, I just need to like be careful. Maybe Seb could be rotated upon down at bottom, but he's playing so incredibly safe. Like, he's just taking waves, he put, put down vision. 
Now, finally, we're going to see some movement out of him. So he's done camping near Baden's lane. Now going to look for a movement in towards the enemy triangle. They know they've got stacks here. Oh boy, do they have stacks here. My god. Uh, going to look over towards Rue here. The charge is out as well. Only has one disruption to use. Vincenzo is just behind him. Going to go for the life drain. Try and keep him alive. And I mean, it, it's doing work. It's doing serious work. Jim is kind of dead as well, though. Thompson's going to kill him. So he's given his life to keep Rue alive here. Is it going to pay off? How much damage can they get onto this void spirit as he moves towards the back line of the fight? But in goes Moonlight. Looking for the big targets here. Moving in towards Sep. They're going for the coddle. Charge through from Kid Track, doing some damage, but also getting himself low in the process. And in comes that Illuminate. Not doing enough to kill anybody off but Moonlight could dead. be in trouble Thompson tries to finish him off oh he dodges the damage from the astral step with the zip Thompson's still in deep though really wants to try and get this kill his cooldowns are coming off in about five seconds for resonant pulse the charge comes through they catch out Moonlight but the heal is there from Jim once again they keep Moonlight alive this pugger is doing way too much work in this fight as finally it looks like things might be over though Mixer is still hanging around and no one he's not Oh, in the triangle. <laughs> in the stacks. Like, boys, this is what we came for. Let's go for it. Yeah. And the Ivy, they are feeling the repercussions of this Abaddon pick. Not able to pressure in lane due to that Kotal counter pick. In the fight as well, he's just chasing the engagement, but getting kited out beautifully. He needs items Moonlight. for the Moonlight going in again. Yeah, he's looking for the back and the RP comes down. There goes the Stone Gaze off from the Medusa, turning Mixer to Stone. So kind of countering out the RP a little bit. Now Moonlight, he's out of mana and Thompson spots that. Once again, Vincenzo trying to keep him alive as best he can. This pugger is being so damn annoying and Kitrek cannot stay on top of him. Mixer might be going down here as Thompson and Roger just get to work trying to rip through him. He's so damn tanky, but it won't be enough as the charge comes through as well. And that will finish the job. Thompson gets the kill. Disruption out onto the Medusa. There's no one really here to follow up on this though. So no one, whilst we will have those annoying illusions going to sound, can just return to that triangle and uh, well, the Pugner. Just sucking away, but does finally die. This is the longest ancient contest I've ever seen in my life. It was what? You invade for the ancients, go for a fight, reset, go for it, take another fight, then you finally get back into it. Unfortunately, Magnus wasn't able to farm them quick enough. No one else on the team really wanted to farm them. It would have yeah. would have been Mixer, no matter what. And yeah, doing so with 5k gold lead now. The Abaddon can't really do it. No, it's quite awkward. Yeah. Wow. That was... like he's trying to do stuff on the map. Like he keep every time he sees a chance, he's going for the jump and Thompson. Thompson should be going he's down. He's dead. Now. Yeah, they find him. Kid track. He's in just a little bit too late, and that'll do it for the Void Spirit. And Vincenzo's there for the top up as well. We've seen this before. This is something which uh, Storm Spirits especially absolutely love. Just having a Pugna. She just mana battery you back up. Yeah, and this is going to be how Ivy survives this uh, mid game. It's going to be Gem and plus the Storm Spirit, throwing Moonlight into the engagement, resetting, getting Life Drain going again. If these two players aren't active and making moves, you're just going to get run over. Chen Army, Spear Breaker, Cuddle, like, they're so quick, aggressive, and in your face, and also innately tanky. So poor old Moonlight, even if he has all the mana in the world. It's not as if he's got some like clean zip target, like see Oracle, kill Oracle. It's a little bit more class it needs to go into the Moon Knight's gameplay to be able to feel good in this game. We'll see if he can pull that off, but right now he's in a bit of trouble as the whole team's collapsing upon him. He's still got a little bit of mana to work with, so we're going to jump over to the sidelines here and start chugging away at that bottle, but he doesn't have much left to run. Can they get him killed off in time? Yes, they can. Roger's there with the stomp, and he earns himself a little tip from Kit Track as well. Western European Division 2. We're a three game series, region only now. What's, I think it's the, <laughs> we've had six gate series in a row with three games. This is the seventh. I don't know what the the streak is, if there's actually a stat for that. The most three game series in a, in a DPC tour before in a row, but we yeah. are trying to go for it right now. We record setters over here. Oh, and it's so sad as well. Like any other carry, like if you had a Terra Blade or another like Siren or a Bloodseeker or something like that, then you'd have money on your on your carry because he's just been completely ignored for the entire game. He's opted to turn up to a few fights, but otherwise, he's just been completely allowed to decide his own game. And, and that is the weakness of the Abaddon is that, well, he's just not going to really do much with the space you give him. He doesn't really want space. He'd much rather just be running around pressuring with a little bit of an advantage coming out of these lanes. Yeah, this hero, he, again, 
kills are important. Like, I've, you rarely see carry Abaddon be 0, zero, zero at the 14 minute mark. Because even if he isn't getting kills, he's throwing out aphotic shields at the right time to enable other people to then thrive in the engagement. And I guess what we were mentioning about that support duo being the SD and the Pugna are quite defensive. And having heroes up front, it's great that you have the heroes to be the bodies for them. But the damage doesn't come innately from the heroes. The heroes like to buy items to do the damage, but levels don't do it for them. So yeah, Ivy, unfortunately not able to dictate the pace of this game. Not really able to do much. Need to sit back and farm. They showed us that they were incredibly efficient in it in the last game. But it's You can only do so much when OG already have the 6k lead. Do so coddle. Voice for it. They just look at a creep wave and it disappears. Absolutely. And a pipe completed at the 14 minute mark. So incredibly tanky on this aura building uh, coddle. Yeah, and Seb, he really kind of just isolated what his team needed from him, and that was to kind of mess with the Abaddon in the early game, not give him any lane to kind of play into. And after that, just get yourself some auras. Go for the drums, go for the pipes. When those drum charges get low, you grab yourself some bongo boots and you're laughing. Big fan of the bongo boots. So, what timings are we really looking for here on Ive? You know, what what are the points of the games when we're going to be seeing them take to the front lines? Is it just this radiance? <laughs> Yo, meanwhile, look at the zoo hitting up Roshan. I'll answer that in a second. Roshan wow, brought the entire dire jungle to <laughs> to say hello to. <laughs> God. Oh. Big multi kill from Roshan there as he kills off like twenty creeps with one slam. But guess what? Roger got twenty more. The boys are here. It was best when I started seeing it because only Roger and Spirit Break. I was like, there is no <laughs> way you two are soloing this thing. <laughs> and then like the, the cores came in bit by bit. Yeah, one of those things where Roger's like, guys, we can do Roche and the cores are like, come on, really? <laughs> yeah. uh, Vincento doing his usual and just standing in the front lines, life draining away. But he will be in trouble. Oh, he used the life drain a second too early there. Just didn't get stunned up and killed. Probably was dead if he didn't do it either. So catch 22. Just a bad place for a Pugna to be in, really. Yeah, this kind of feels like how OG wanted to play in the previous game with like their TA draft and everyone doing things whilst TA farms. But now they're replicating it correctly in this game. They're taking away the, the Roshans. They're running around us four. The Dusa, of course, is some unkillable hero anyway. So if she was to get ganked, there's going to be turnaround potential of stone gaze and you're mentioning timings for ivy at this point in the game you need to just accept that you're behind taking a team fight would be at the detriment of the game and you need to hope for like magnus plays at the high ground positioning and just hurting og that way well moonlight does commit a little bit here onto the spirit breaker who might have taken a step too far forward they will use that skewer just to make sure that he doesn't try any charge away nonsense towards the end there and uh, that'll be a death for Kitrax. So a little bit of a gift heading the way off Ivy, and that's going to certainly diffuse that push that was mounting there from Old G. That's bad. He does have the Radiance. All right. Ultimate Takes. might get popped. No, doesn't get popped. Good for the time being. Shield's also available as Moonlight once again jumping around the sidelines here, finding Roger. Roger is going to get any help here. Well, there's going to be a blinding light coming out from Zep, but it's not going to be enough to save the day. Roger will fall. Are going to pick up that kill? Thompson being dragged back into the entirety of Ivy at the moment, but uh, the whole team is coming to back him up. Oh, gee, are here and they are ready to fight. They're going to take down Brew. They're going to look over. They're going to claim Jim Mencento as well. So they don't really care that they kill off their chin. They are able to get two kills in revenge. And now the push doth cometh. Oh, so much damage. All these little creeps so are attacked right by 51. <laughs> he has three Dark Troll summoners, and each of them providing a little bit of rally aura. <laughs> no, the They're skeletons. They're for 12 plus no. 57 for each one that... No! My brothers! But as long as Roger keeps these alive, I was very close to saying solo there. That was a lot of uh, nostalgia for anyone. He independently can push any lane. Ivy, they need to relatively deal with this. Like... It's a lot. Yeah. So I'm going to have another round of skeletons in just a few seconds. Then you've got that that power timing of the 24 skeletons running at you. Plus 24 damage to each of them. That's why the Abaddon Radiance pick was very oh, painful in the draft. Uh, he got another one. 
Empty. He's got another Dark Troll Summoner. Wait, he's got four? Oh my god. Yo. I didn't even think he get four. We Where's might... the Earthshaker? Gonna go onto Kit Track here. Kit Track surviving for the time being as uh, Otika's kind of on the front line, just being toyed with a bit. I mean, that Radiant's not doing a lot, it has to be said. So he's gonna be able to run away with that ultimate though. They won't kill him off, but now doesn't really want to turn the up into a fight. Here. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> here come the boys. No, Moonlight, he's gonna kill them all. Oh my god, an explosion of damage. Look at all that gold. I mean, he is for it's like nine gold per little skeleton, right? He's spawning like 20. That's that's a sizable amount of gold was, over time, right? He, well, it was 24 he needs to when he had three, so it should be 33% more than that. So, yeah, around 30 skeletons, technically speaking, if he was maxing Oof. it out. So, 30 times nine. I'm not saying that this is the comeback mechanism <laughs> that Ivy needs. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come back into this game in the post game interview? Well, <laughs> they were all these skeletons. It's actually, oh my god. Oh, I, I, I missed it, the, the general shenanigans. Sure, Rue's dying, but I'm just watching some troll summoners. But Roger's no. dead, but that's because he's busy microing the trolls in bot lane. Yeah. I mean, who, who cares? You're not, you're not playing your hero anymore. You're, you're playing the boys. Who are now at the bottom lane. Oh, too. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Make oh, someone say this time. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Get that money. There's so more. Oh, there. Be careful. <laughs> the stray shockwaves caught them out. They're trying to sneak through the trees. The sneaky Get boys. Him, Get to the tower. Get spotted. to the tower. Oh, no. They've been found. Oh. Most anticlimactic death possible. Oh, well. At least, at least the, the father's still alive. But when more are spawned. Oh, no. He's got to RP them. <laughs> no, he's getting get so baited by the skeletons. At the, moment. the boys are getting revenge. They're going to bring down Mixer. Uh, no one. They're actually popping off. He there. legit got so baited. He like, really did. We're getting baited in the cast looking at these skeletons. <laughs> and Mixer sees him for like the 20th time. He's on his screen. He's seen over like 100 different skeletons in the last five minutes. He wants to finally kill him. Instantly dies because of it. Like, yep. He can't get baited. We can't get baited. Ivy. Mr. Madden, he completed the Echo Saber. Still looking. Oh. Again, I feel like Roger just doesn't care at this point. Wait, he doesn't have any mana. Kitrax found him. Oh, oh. He's got a big. Oh. He's got a 21. To, oh, that was clean. Yeah, that helps a lot. Kitrax kind of trying to find it, but won't be able to close the gap anymore. And the team are TPing in as well. Magnus respawning in one second. He will survive this time around, but yeah, risky from Moonlight. I mean, the fact that he had a 21 really was his get out of jail free card there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still watching the boys. <laughs> he was trying to use Bro, the we're trolls. Calm down. <laughs> you know, he, this I was tried funny. my best. This is funny. He was trying to use the trolls to give uh, Medusa extra farming speed. But then when Medusa tried to go from. So they were all following her. When she tried to go from camp to camp, they just blocked no one completely. So no one was just like <laughs> pinging them, being like, dude, got these fucking skeletons out of my way. <laughs> he was literally stuck in a maze of skeletons. I mean, Roger is going to have the highest economy in all the land because look at he, what he just did. He just TP'd them to top. So now we can ignore the skeletons for a minute because they're AFK farm on the other side of the map. Oh, yeah. Kit Track, though, is getting aggressed upon, nice. continuing to charge. Yeah, just charging well, away from all the problems. Vortex, though. Like, during the zip, of course, you can Vortex, so you're not able to get bashed in that, but wasn't able to connect on the spells. And yeah, Kit Track, a little bit lucky there. He is going for the currently... Position 5 popular build, we've seen it in China Division 2, Europe Division 2. We got the, the Skelly Cam in top lane, that's what I was mentioning. Roger is just nice. farming anything that spawns. What's this GPM actually? Are we are we looking at like, cool number? 336. He's got a lot of work to do. Pumbo's Still below the max is about 70. I mean, he, you get he's, up to he's 400 then, we'll start being impressed, but... Yeah, look, as you see here, currently sitting at a 342 GPM, of course, way above the other supports in the game, but in the shadow of the Magnus. If he is able to overtake the Magnus, it would be because of his skeleton army. Absolutely. Bro, imagine if you just never kill the skeletons in top. Every minute he farms this top side of the map that you kind of forget about. As the game progresses, no one really hits these creeps other than the the game's really difficult. Let's try and hide away and farm. So, yeah. But then the trade-off is your Chen has no creeps in the fight. Like he is just 100% farming. I mean, AFK he can farming. bring them in. He's, he's got, he's got. What? Persuasion. Tr yeah, true. 
There we go. He's doing so right now because there is a fight of brewing in the middle lane. Now, Moonlight, he does hit. have a decent amount of damage. They're even going to throw down the RP just to make sure they kill off Topson here. The heal from Sep, not enough to keep him alive. So, big pick off here onto the Void Spirit, and that will take the wind out of OG's tails. I mean, has to be said here, OG, they have a bit of an advantage. They're not One's able to do Oh, dying. no. Get him away. The Dark Troll Summoner, he's in trouble. Oh, no, he's lost one. Oh, Sep is wrong. Sep is wrong. Oh, he got his ring. Yeah, I don't really care about Sep, but yeah, he's getting killed as well. That's also important. Dude, <laughs> both teams are getting baited by these trolls. Like, Roger TP's them in. They're trying to no. take a fight, and now Roger's dying as well. Wait, there's no detection. Detection. Dust. No. This is a real problem. This is a real gank. Oh, the Dark Troll Summoners. is carnage in the bottom lane. All four Finally. lying dead on the floor. A huge win here from Ivy. Nice, we can stop talking about them. Yeah, oh I was going to say. The cast just is... improved by about 5%. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we should take a look at some of the item, other items here as a board. I mean, uh, Storm's Brewing, nothing very exciting. It's a Witchblade, it's a Kaya and Sanj, but Abaddon is heading towards this... Uh, he's already got the Echo Saber. He's heading towards the Manta as well, at a fairly alarming pace, so... He's, he's slowly going to get to the point where no one on OG can kill him other than Medusa over time with like Scardy, Spam and stuff like that. They do need to be careful. Yeah, you, you need to respect they, they this about because when he comes yeah. online, he's, he's a beast. I think it's, it's it's a beast, but in the sense of if kited, he's the worst hero in the game. But if he's not kited and he's propelling his heroes through, dispelling things with a Fudic shield, soaking up spells, silencing void spirits whilst he's trying to be greedy, it will really help and looking at the yeah, because of how aggressive OG have been, 2.4k gold swing is only because of bounty pickups. That is pretty incredible to see. Helps when you're in the lead. Love. And Roshan's now on the cards. Abaddon, we just mentioned he has got the Manta, so not as if any items are on hold for Ivy. They are ready to go. Oh, here they go. Immediately dropping the RP down on Thompson once again. They just want to kill off the Void Spirit, but it won't be able to do so. And actually, no one's just going to chop in Santo in half. And now they look towards Mixer as well. Mixer with no means of escape will be dropping very, very quickly. They've also found Rue on the sidelines here. Kid Tracks is going to try to deal with him all by his lonesome because the rest of the team, well, they turn around and kill him off. And now it might be Roshan time. Hmm. Not, not the, the cleanest of initiations there for Ivy. Of course, when you are down by 9,000 gold, it's not as if it's going to be just go there and we'll probably do well in the fight. Like, they do need to kind of construct it correctly. RP in the void spirit without the follow up damage on top. Yeah, that's a lot of issue. IV's damage is damage over time. The chip of the Abaddon, the poison of the SD, the life drains of the Pugna. They're not the most explosive of lineups to utilize RP. And I think they need to be mindful of that. I mean, Mixer, in any other draft, that RP is game winning. You, know, you kill void spirit instantly look for that numbers advantage but i think ivy after that engagement will in the back of their mind start thinking probably can't fight in this style do need to kind of change it up a little bit issue is you're giving og uh, another aegis to try and end the game on can they survive five minutes with the dusa who's got what is it right now butterfly manta silver edge and soon to be lincoln's to be able to deal with this the shadow demon jeez yeah. And Thompson, we see on screen as well, like, he's got the nullifier. So Pugna, Pugna's been dealt with. SD's soon to be dealt with with Lincoln's. Oh, okay, it's, he's been dealt with. So both supports, not the cleanest of fights now for them. They need to kind of navigate their way through dodging these key items. Oh, cheeky shard for the Spirit Breaker as they take that Tormentor, so... Uh, it's going to be really good uh, if the Spirit Breaker can hug the Medusa as well. You just soak up that disruption because, of course, any spell cast upon he will tank up one of them so yeah he can tank up the disruptions from accidentally i guess and no one he's taken a long time to go for this scardy like uh, i was very really surprised that scardy wasn't like the first or second item on the agenda but i uh, comes for a pretty much scardy -less build so far might be the final answer um to replace this aegis but at the moment just gone for a slightly more aggressive damage dealing build i suppose rather than going for the kind of slower control and Certainly working for them at the moment. No one's been looking like my absolute beast as uh, they come charging in here. Whoa, 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 whoa. The, there comes the uh, the skewer back from Mixer. 
And I'm going to try and follow up on 2k track here. And I don't think there's going to be any help coming his way. That try and skew a combo. Just so, so annoying. Ouch. If, if, even the small things, no one with the silver bridge, when you apply break to a baton, his ultimate won't automatically drop. Scary. So I take it always having to think about, do I need to press this? Just makes it a little bit harder to play. Pugna caught out in the trees, unfortunately. Tried to go for the aggressive placement there of the Nether Ward. Just gets caught out. Moonlight also trying to jump on the back lines and mix up, but doesn't really get it off. Silence is out as well, so no RP for you. And they've even found Moonlight as well. It all seems to be falling apart right now for Ivy. Trying to get themselves back as Zodica taking some shots here. No one trying to finish the job. Snake bouncing through, even threatening onto Moonlight a little bit there as well. They're just going to chase them back. And now, well, they're going to go and just wait for the creep wave. Uh, they don't really feel like staying for the range barracks. You know that the game's in a bit of a doom state when the taker goes for the 29 minute defusal blade. Yikes. Defusal is an item that you want to pick up relatively early just to utilize that slow, the, the active components of it. But when you're picking up this late, sure, it might help chip away a little bit of, of the mana, but it's not as impactful. So Medusa's mana pool has drastically increased since then. Yeah, the only thing I would say is I do kind of like it as an answer to the Void Spirit. You can RP him. Then you can get that Manta off and you can maybe draining up mana because at the moment you are here and you've got to Manta off the silence at the end and get away anyway. So you can take him out of the fight permanently. But again, using RP and a full duration of the carry's time to not kill someone is a pretty bad plan. But Roger has been dragged into the mix here and blown up pretty quickly, but they've also managed to get that ultimate out from the Abad. So he is now vulnerable. And you've got to respect that if you're Ivy, unfortunately. So you're going to just have to look for another pick with the Magnus here. That, that's all they can really play for. It's a tough situation Constant, to be in. Yeah, constantly playing for picks, but also one combination that they can use is the Disseminate on top of the Abaddon. Abaddon, of course, can soak up so much damage and will disseminate any damage received. He then reflects it to his opponents. So that could be a strategy down the line. The small things, the small layers, but again, it's I'm really reaching for Ivy to be able to get something going their way. Magnus will be the key factor in any attempt of a hold. 50 seconds until Aegis expires. Absolutely, and no one just smashing away. Doesn't even care. Oh my god, what happened to that Magnus? He tried to jump in again, and and just get turned to stone and completely blasted down by the Medusa. Way too much damage. Game is hard, says Mixer. I feel you there, buddy. Looking like the door is starting to swing shut. And IV, well, they're just trying to block it with their little toes at the moment, or at least that's what it feels like. There's Thompson jumps in the back lines once again, just killing off Rude, killing any chance they could have of a save. Gear track is low, will be finished off by the Illusions and by Otika, but again, Otika, his ultimate is down, and that means he can go nowhere near this Medusa. She is just too scary, just too powerful. They're gonna go for this melee barracks. Now, don't forget, there is that range barracks at the top, which they forgot about earlier on, so two barracks still remaining for Ivy, but their base is an absolute shambles. The game oh, is the an absolute go high shambles. Ground. Go on, catapult, go, catapult, go! No, no. One more hit, One Come more on. hit. Kill it, Moonlight. Oh, he doesn't go oh, for it. Oh, there we go. Easy catapult. Too Could easy for catapult. Could have potentially. Yeah. Didn't expect six-man rosters to still be allowed, but that catapult really doing his best to join old G. <laughs> Well, in we go to the high ground. The final barrack now being pushed. They're going to go for the back lines. Wrap around here on the side of Ivy. One Hail Mary attempt, but Jim Santo instantly destroyed, cut in half. The RP does come down onto two. Fairly nice, but do they have the follow up damage? The answer, unfortunately, seems to be no. Kit Trax was controlling them up. Two down nicely, forcing the storm away. He's trying to go for the TP out, and they're successful in doing so. Mix, however, not quite so lucky. He's going to get brought down. Thompson now looking over towards Otaka as well. Otaka trying to get out. He has got the borrowed time to keep himself alive a little bit longer but when it runs out it's going to be a powerful awakening no one though out of mana they, they could potentially just kidding just kidding they kill off the abad and they can't even coming out from roger there a little bang bang from the side oh dear it, it, it it's feeling a little bit over i mean yeah you're fit you're seeing the effectiveness of chen in these engagements the creeps that he has he's got the little speed aura so like 30 percent speed the, the cloak aura which is 12 percent uh, Magic resistance, the critical, the alpha wolf, the critical aura, like that entire engagement, Roger's just microing these little creeps in a little bot.